Hi, this is Daniel Oppenheimer, a producer for the College of Natural Sciences here at UT Austin, and this is the story of the OPAD, the Origami Paper Analytical Device. So there are two elements to this story that make it kind of neat, I think. One is how Hong Lu, the chemistry graduate student who you see here, who invented the OPAD, got his inspiration for the device. He was reading a paper by Harvard chemist George Whitesides about what's called a 3D microfluidic paper sensor, which is what the OPAD is. And it struck him that Whitesides and his colleagues were using, uh, the methods they were using to assemble the device were a lot more complex than they needed to be. They had to use laser cutters and two-sided tape, and once it was all taped together, it couldn't be unfolded, so that placed real constraints on the amount of data that you could extract from the sensor. So Hong was reading this, and he thought back to the origami lessons he got as a boy growing up in China. So here he's explaining kind of his, uh, his eureka moment. It's art from Asia. I'm from China. So when I was very young, the teacher taught us how to fold the paper into a, the animal. And when I read the, the three-dimensional microfluidic paper by George Weiss, I, I, I think it doesn't have to be that difficult. It can be very easy just fold the paper and then apply pressure so that you can make vertical action between different layers. The other part of the story, the next part of the story, and for my money, the more amazing part, is the process that Hong developed as a result of that inspiration and how, how amazingly simple that process is and how that simplicity creates the potential to test for diseases like malaria and HIV for just a few cents a test with almost instantaneous results. So, so here it is. It starts here. A common office printer, common printer paper, and a wax-based ink that you can buy off the shelf. Hong designs the sensor on the computer to whatever specs he wants, and then he just clicks print. It prints out, he pulls it out of the printer, then he cuts it out, uh, sort of like my daughter sometimes cuts out paper dolls. He folds it all up until the layers are stacked on top of each other, and then he puts it between two pieces of glass onto a hot plate. And all the hot plate does is it melts the wax ink, the black stuff, so that wherever that black is, that realm of the paper is hydrophobic, literally afraid of water. It becomes a no-flow zone for whatever water-based sample you're testing. Then those remaining spaces, those stark white channels, which are hydrophilic, are where the biological sample is going to flow. So blood, urine, saliva, they'll avoid the wax and flow into these channels. And embedded in these channels are what's called biomarkers. And biomarkers are just substances that react in a certain way when they're in the presence of whatever you're looking for. So if you're looking for some protein that's characteristic of malaria-infested blood, then the biomarkers will react in the presence of that protein. Often they'll just turn a certain color, uh, something that simple and easy to read by eye. So here you can see the blue and yellow liquid, which aren't real biological samples, but would sort of function in the same way. As they're drawn up into the paper, they avoid the wax. And what's special about the three-dimensionality of this sensor is that you have not just that top layer surface you see where you can embed a biomarker and read results, but you, have, you can have individual tests at each layer, and also, depending on the design, you can create complex tests that are the result of the vertical connections between different markers embedded at different layers. So you put in your sample, and it might be testing for three or four different things, or it might be doing four or five tests for the same thing so that you have a certain degree of redundancy. And then you just unfold it, and it's like reading a pregnancy test. And in fact, it's based on some of the same principles as the pregnancy test. Blue means yes, the absence of blue means no, and, uh, and that's it. it. It costs very little money. It doesn't have to be printed or folded in the context of a multi-million dollar lab. It can be folded by anyone with steady hands. It's stable, so it can be stored and shipped over long distances. And it could, uh, in the not-too-distant future, save a lot of lives. So that's pretty cool.